Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. This is Brad with Being Chill. Today I want to talk about why MagSafe is going to be necessary for the iPhone 13 and why they've added it to the iPhone 12 even though a lot of people are now seeing that it maybe wasn't as good as they made it sound like and why is Apple pushing it so hard. Now before we get into that I do want to ask if you're not already to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I upload new videos every week Monday through Friday so if you like this content make sure you subscribe and click that bell and you can stay up to date on all the latest tech news with me. Now let's get into it. So as many of you are very well aware by now, the iPhone 12 just came out and a lot of people are disappointed that they didn't include the 120 Hz ProMotion display like we have with the iPad Pro and like what we see in a lot of comparable flagships that are out there. And I believe this is because the iPhone is just pushed to the limits of its current form factor and to make it thinner than the iPhone 11, this is the thinnest iPhone yet. They've had to shave off a lot of stuff and included even a smaller battery than what we saw in the iPhone 11. And I believe that they had to shave off some extra space too to make room for the 5G millimeter wave antennas that they're cramming inside these devices. And that combined with the 120 Hertz ProMotion display would have just drained the battery life too much. As we're already seeing reports coming out that the 5G is draining the batteries on the iPhone 12 very quickly and a lot of people are choosing to turn it off instead. So obviously Apple's going to have to improve upon the iPhone 12 in some way in order to entice people to buy the newer iPhone 13. And they don't want to make the device thicker because they're going to face criticisms and they typically make the devices thinner every year. But they also want to have to add new features to it that are going to make people want to buy it. So they're really pushed to the limits here and they're going to try to cram as much stuff into it as possible. But if there's no room, how are they going to make the device smaller or have more features than the iPhone 12? Well, they're going to have to remove the lightning port, and a lot of people think that this is the reason why they're pushing MagSafe so hard. Even though the accessories are kind of impractical, like we've seen videos with the MagSafe wallet not sticking on very well. And I really don't think that these devices are going to be able to hold your phone when you're driving on like a car mount, just because the magnet is not as strong as they make it seem. And the charging on these MagSafe chargers is slower than what you get with a cable, so it really doesn't make sense why they're pushing it so hard. Although it is worth noting here that it is twice as fast as typical wireless chargers that are currently available for other devices. However, 15 watts is still slower than the 20 watts that you get from the cable directly. Now, why are they removing the lightning port? Because they need extra room in the device to add more components, whether it be a 120 hertz refresh rate, better cameras, other sensors, or a bigger battery. Whatever they need to add, they're going to have room because they're going to be able to remove that port on the bottom of the iPhone and that's going to free up more space and likely have the device be more waterproof than before. This would also coincide with the reason why they didn't include USB-C on the new iPhone 12 despite everybody asking for it because it's kind of the standard these days and they just decided to include the lightning port instead even though they have it on the iPad Pros and now the iPad Air as well as the MacBooks. So I don't think they wanted to include USB-C knowing full well that this would be the last time an iPhone had a port on it and they didn't want to make new accessories or kind of contradict what they said with helping the environment by removing the charging bricks from the boxes by making everyone get a new USB-C cable instead of using their current lightning cables. So you might be thinking, yeah, they could remove the port from the iPhone, but why does the iPad Pro and the iPad Air now and likely future iPads still have USB-C? And the reason is because those devices are so much bigger and they're not really strapped for space when it comes to putting hardware inside of them. So they're not going to take that out as well as the device is not waterproof and people need the USB-C so they can connect other peripherals in their workstation, whether it be a monitor or a USB hub with a mouse and keyboard, etc. People really do need that port, especially if they're going to use it like the pro device that they claim that it is. So we will not see the USB-C port disappearing from that anytime soon, if ever. Also because charging those devices wirelessly is not currently possible, but even if they do implement it in the future, you're going to have to have special accessories like a likely a new bigger MagSafe charging puck just because it's hard to position the iPad on there to get charging because you have to hit that one spot where the charger can connect and it's going to wobble side to side if you don't have a very big puck and likely fall off and the device batteries are just so big that it's going to be too slow to be very practical so I really don't see wireless charging coming to these devices anytime soon but they could surprise us next year with a big MagSafe on the new iPad Pro 5th generation which is likely to release in March of 2021. So even though MagSafe is clearly inferior to charging your phone with a normal cable and lacks many of the benefits of having a charging cable, we are still seeing Apple push it across the board to try to get more people to adopt it. 
even though it's not quite as innovative as they make it seem and some of the accessories just aren't as reliable but Apple's hoping that all these people will start picking up the new MagSafe stuff and ditch their old cables before they don't have an option to use them at all that way the next iPhone when it releases without a charging port people won't be that surprised and they won't really care otherwise we'll see the same backlash like we saw with the removal of the audio jack a couple years ago now I do expect that once Apple starts doing this, just like with the audio jack, other companies are going to start to follow suit and remove these as well to save money. And that's likely definitely going to happen on the Samsung phones very quickly because these companies really just want to cut their bottom dollar as much as possible. So wrapping all that up, I do want to say that I think Apple is really just using this technology to kind of buy themselves time to preserve the current form factor of these devices while they wait for technology to advance and get to a point where they can make a revolutionary new design change on the iPhone, like a new folding phone perhaps, or maybe something else, who knows what they have in store. But I do think that they're just buying time waiting for that to happen. Now let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think MagSafe is going to work out well? Do you use it already if you have an iPhone 12? And let me know if you think that the iPhone 13 is going to have a charging port or not. Now if you did like this content, make sure you smash that like button. And once again, I upload new videos every week, Monday through Friday. So if you like this content, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future releases. Now I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace! Peace.